I'm Richard Redman. This story is about two old-time actors who were partners and used to do vaudeville routines as part of their act. They performed their act on stage in Las Vegas and finally made it big time in the movies. But as time went on, they became less popular. People wanted different types of movies and the orders got less and less. And as with some of the Hollywood actors, they were a dying breed. you know it, the minute I sit down, hold your horses, I'm coming. Hello? No, I want to make a contribution. No, I don't need any hearing aids. No, I don't want any free cruises. And I hate little puppies, so I don't need to donate any money, which I don't have, to the poor creatures. There, yeah, that covers everything. track problem and I don't need a life panic alert button if I fall down I'll just take a short nap and if I win the lottery just give the money to the church Exercise is making me sleepy. Dad, 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 are you all right? What the? Who are you? It's me, Eric. Are you okay? Of course I'm okay. What the hell's going on? You startled me. I thought you were... Eh, never mind. Dad, you thought I was dead. I've been calling you on the phone. Was that you? Yes, it was me. But you were talking crazy. And then you didn't answer the phone. So I came running over here to see what was wrong. And then I see you sitting there and... Why didn't you tell me it was you? I could have saved you the trip. You didn't give me a chance to get a word in. Well, the next time, ring twice, hang up, call back, then I know it's you. Why don't you get a phone with caller ID or a cell phone? I don't need a new phone. This phone works perfect. I say hello, they say who they are. That's all the caller ID I need. Why don't you get a cell phone? I'll buy it for you. Cell phone? Uh, I don't trust any phone that doesn't have a wire attached. Uh, I give up. Besides, how did you get in here? The door was unlocked. Why did you use your key? Hello. I didn't need a key. It was unlocked. Oh, yeah. I didn't lock it when I got the paper. Well, you should be careful. There's people out there that prey on senior citizens. 
Son, if anybody broke in here looking for money or valuables, I'd tell them I'd split them with them if they found anything. Well, you should be careful. Yeah, you want anything? Coffee, tea? No, nothing. Then why did you come over? I wanted to tell you something. I got a call from Bernie, your talent agent. Bernie, why didn't he call me? He did. He called you last week, but you didn't answer. Well, he should have rung twice, hang up, and call back. How would he know? It's been ten years. He should have known. Anyway, what did that sleazeball want? He wasn't a sleazeball. He treated you all right. That's a matter of opinion, and your opinion don't matter. Well, what did he want? He wants to talk to you. Well, then tell him to call and ring twice. He wants to stop by and see you. Okay, tell him to stop by, but tell him to knock twice. He wants to bring Buddy with him. Buddy? Buddy, your old stage partner. I know who Buddy is. You think I've lost my mind? I know. They both want to stop by and see you. Well, I don't want to see Buddy. Where are you going? I'm going to get some fresh air. It's a nice day out here. They have a proposition for you. I think you should see them. Proposition? What proposition? I think you should talk to them. It sounds interesting. Listen, for ten years, ten years, I haven't seen or spoken to Buddy. And if I never talk to him again, it's all right with me. Talk to him? You got nothing to lose. I got my pride to lose. I may not have much, but I got my pride. Yeah, but pride doesn't pay the bills. I'm doing fine. Well, I told them I would talk with you. That's the best I can do. If you don't want to see them, that's your business, not mine. It's just that I think it would be good for you, financially and socially, and give you something to do besides sitting around the house all day watching TV. Yeah, well, I got to go. I'll call them back and tell them you don't want to talk to them. I'll see you, Dad. Yes, yeah, son, goodbye. Hello? Hello, son. This is your father. Are you home already? No, Dad. This is my cell phone. I'm driving home. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll call you when you get home. You can talk to me now. It makes no difference. Here or home. Okay. Uh, I thought it over. I'll see Bernie, but not Buddy. Okay, will do. I'll let him know. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Come on in, it's unlocked. Well, Ray.
Hey, long time no see. How have you been? Well, up until you knocked on the door, I was doing fine. But maybe this is when it all goes downhill. Well, still the same old Ray. I'll never figure out why you never like me. I never said I didn't like you. You're a talent agent. What's the like? I never trusted you. Now, what did I ever do to earn your distrust? Well, I could give you a dozen examples, but we'd be here all day. And I'm sure you didn't come here to rehash old times. You're right. I came here to offer you a deal I received from some producers. What kind of deal? Sit down. They want to produce a new series of episodes to show on Netflix. Net who? Netflix. It's a streaming service. You can watch a variety of movies, TV shows, original posts. You look puzzled. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm not up to date on this new stuff. Well, regardless, they want to make a series to show on Netflix and they want you. Me? That's right, you. Do they pay? Of course they pay. And you get your percentage? Of course I get my percentage. And what else do they want? What do you mean? You know, there's an old waterboat routine. A man comes home late to his room in a crowded boarding house. As he gets ready for bed, he removes and drops a shoe with a thump on the floor. Remembering that his downstairs neighbor often complains of late night noise, he takes off the other shoe and places it gently on the floor. After he settles under the covers, an irritated voice from the room below shouts, When are you going to drop the other shoe? Well? Ah, well, um, they want you and... Well, buddy. And you just dropped the other shoe. Buddy. Me and Buddy. Well, to be more accurate, they want Buddy and you. Oh, I'm just an add-on. Second billing. Well, you can tell them to take before, their offer. Before you fly off the handle, talk to Buddy first. He'll explain. He's waiting outside. Outside? Why didn't he come in with you? Well, he wanted me to talk to you first, soften you up a little. Will you talk to him? I'll send him in. Oh, so you're the first act. Warm up the audience before the main attraction comes on. The old, you ain't seen nothing yet. Okay. Send him in. It's about time he and I had it out. I'll go out and send him in. Then I'll leave you two alone. Goodbye, Ray. I uh, hope we will be seeing each other. Yeah, goodbye. So how did it go? Buddy boy, he's all in. I'm gonna go talk to him. Hey Ray, it's me, Buddy. Buddy? Buddy who? How long has it been? Not long enough. You can at least put the paper down and look at me. I'm looking at you. If it isn't Mr. Hollywood. What are you pushing today? He told me I should invest in gold or take out a reverse mortgage on my house. Or maybe you want me to spark up my love life with that little blue pill you keep pushing on those TV ads. I'm tired of seeing your face on TV. Those are well-paying gigs I've gotten. Yeah, fleecing old people out of their money. Listen, I'm not responsible for the content of those ads. Personally, I don't own gold. I would never reverse mortgage my house. Aha, but the little blue pill? Now that's a different story. A man goes into the chemist and asks for some Viagra. Have you got a prescription? 
The chemist asked him. No, but would a picture of my wife do? See, we haven't lost the timing. Have you seen my last commercial? I hope it was your last commercial. What do you want? Didn't Bernie tell you? Bernie's an agent. You know, you can't believe what an agent says. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Well, I was contacted, or should I say we were contacted, by a producer who's writing a script for Netflix. The main characters are two old vaudevillians, real actors who know the routines, the timing, everything. So what's that got to do with me? What do you mean? We did vaudeville. They want us. So can't you get another actor uh, to follow in your shadow? Come on, Ray. There's not too many of us left. You can't teach what we did. You know, it takes years of working together to get the timing, learning the routines. I'm not interested. Find some other schmuck to be your comedian. What is it with you? I haven't heard from you in 10 years. You never called me. Well, you could have dialed the phone too, or maybe you're a big shot. What did I ever do to you? Do to me? I'll tell you what you did to me. Back then, you made that movie without me. Oh, that. That's what you're all upset about. All these years over one dumb movie. We were partners. You shouldn't have done it. I told you then if you did it, we were through. It wasn't a comedy, it was a drama. And they felt that I was right for the role. I don't care, that's not the point. You broke up the act when you took that part and left me blowing in the wind. My career went downhill after that. You could have been demanded that I have a role in the movie. First, I had no say in the matter. They had plenty of other actors who would have jumped at the part. Second, the two of us in the drama would have made no sense. Fans would have been expecting a comedy, and when they went to see it, they would have been disappointed. Abbott and Costello tried that, and it failed miserably. Well, you didn't have to do it. We could have made another movie together. What movie? There were no offers being made. Our style of comedy was on its way out. The times were changing, and people wanted different movies. Face it, Ray. We were the last of a dying breed. Something would have came along. Yeah. We could have been the opening act for a Walmart ribbon-cutting ceremony. Even Vegas was changing. Face it, Ray. We were through. That's why I grabbed that movie, and I'm glad I did. It opened up doors for me. I got to make a few more movies and the commercials. The money was good, and it kept me out of the old comedian's retirement home. Well, you could have pushed a little harder so they could have used me. So goodbye. And don't let the door hit in your backside on the way out. I'd have the butler show you out, but I don't have one. So that's it? You're not interested? Goodbye. Before I leave, I want to set the record straight. I said I would never tell you, and I swore to everyone in your family I would keep my mouth shut. Beatrice, God bless her soul, begged me to keep quiet. I'm sorry I missed her funeral. But I have to get this weight off my shoulder. It's been bothering me for years. I knew what you must have thought of me. The reason I took that part alone, the studio wanted nothing to do with you anymore. What do you mean? To be honest, I did beg the studio to use you in a movie. Bernie begged also. I told them if they didn't cast you, I wouldn't do it. But they said that they would get some other actor to do the part. But Bernie and your wife told me to take the part. It was only fair because the producer didn't want to work with you. Beatrice told you to take the part? She never told me. Yeah, she did. Why didn't the producers want me? What did I do? Come on, Ray, you must know. I don't. It was a reputation you had. You're drinking, showing up late on the set for shoots, showing up drunk. Come on, what do you mean? You were getting cantankerous with me, with the directors, when we did our routines, your timing was off. You were forgetting your lines because of the booze. Come on, I could always handle my liquor. No, Ray, you couldn't. Many times I had to make excuses for you. 
I was trying to carry you in the routines. Well, why didn't you say something? I did, but you never listened or you were too drunk to care. You mean all these years I've been angry at you? Somebody should have told me. Yeah, but that's all hindsight right now. And they want us for the parts? That's right. Buddy and Ray on the screen again. And it pays good? Good enough to get you out of your son's home and have no money worries for the rest of your life. We also get royalties every time the film is watched. Royalties? But there is only one thing. Ah, uh, now the other shoe drops again. No booze. They insist, and so do I. I've been off this stuff for five years. Five years? Are you sure? Hand of God. You know why I used to drink? I don't know. You were thirsty? I couldn't stand the pressure. When we did vaudeville on stage, it was easy. It was second nature. We had our routines. Our timing was down pat. But in film, doing take after take, breaking up the skin into short pieces was too much to handle. So I drank to take the edge off. There could be no drinking on this film, or they'll just get someone else. There's a lot of money riding on this. Can you handle that? Sure. Like I said, I've been sober now for five years. Well, then I'll tell Bernie to contact them and tell them that Bud and Ray are back in action. The last of the dying breed is back and alive. Yeah, Bud and Ray. I'm going to go. I'll give you a call and we can get together and go over some of our old routines. It was good to see you again, Ray. I'm glad we're a team again. I'll let myself out. Good seeing you, bud. Take it easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta go. Ciao, baby. Bud and Ray, we're a team again! Come on, Ray, you don't need this drink. Ah, the hell with it, it's only a movie. A toast to the dying breed. Ah, the hell with them. story doesn't end there. Ray was able to control his drinking and never missed a day of filming, always showed up sober and prepared. And now the other shoe drops. It turns out Buddy was a bigger boozer than Ray, and they had trouble with him when he came time for filming. Needless to say, after a few episodes they wrote Buddy out, and they continued on with Ray as the lead character. Today you can find Ray on television, advertising and pushing the little blue pill. Now, a scene from the play Poor John, written by Gregorio Martinez Sierra. In this scene, John is explaining to Antonio about his misfortune in life and how Mariana, his wife, has been so good to him. Well, John, you have to be brave. How can you expect a man to be brave when he meets with nothing in life but misfortune? 
Everything has gone wrong with me since the day I was born. Whatever I put my hand to fails utterly. You know it better than I do. I was brought up to be rich and I'm poor. I studied law and I cannot string three words together. A man must be strong in that profession. He must have vigor of body and mind, yet I'm all out of breath if I walk up a hill. I have not the heart to crush even a fly. To save the little that remains to us after the folly of my father, I need to be unscrupulous, bold. Yet my mother, God bless her, has taught me to be good, good, always good. Yes, laugh, but this is not living. I don't know what I should do if it were not for Mariana. If it were not for her, I might be the one who shot myself. But she has been so good to me, so kind. All the happiness I have ever known in my life until now has sprung from her. May have been only a little now and then, small things, trifles, help, advice. It was presumptuous of me, but I am so accustomed to relying upon Mariana that I imagined that the treasure was all mine. Besides, I love her so. Why should she not be all goodness and take me like a little child into her life, like a toy that you play with or a dog of which you are fond? But let me be all hers, all hers, because I love her. If she could only love me a little, I should be satisfied. A little is enough. Mm -hmm.